we're still on track to roll out new models this year. Like with every big launch, there are always a few last-minute issues to iron out, but things are clearly moving quickly behind the scenes. Just as Tesla works through those final challenges, something big has surfaced, the next-gen budget EV has already been spotted live in testing out in Fremont, California. This lines up perfectly with Elon Musk's plan to produce millions of affordable EVs by 2026. Leading the charge is the highly anticipated Model 2, which aims to hit a target price around $10,179 and ramp up to an annual production volume of 1 to 2 million units. It's a car that's set to disrupt the entry-level vehicle market and give gas-powered cars a serious run for their money. This is more than a new EV, it's the start of a transportation revolution. Before we dive into everything we've learned about the Model 2, make sure to hit that subscribe button and help Auto Intel reach our next big milestone, 1000 subscribers. And don't forget to turn on notifications, so you never miss a single Tesla update or EV breakthrough. So, why did Tesla pick Fremont to be the birthplace of the Model 2? Well, the Fremont factory in California has been Tesla's core innovation hub since day one, and for good reason. It's the place where some of Tesla's most iconic vehicles first came to life. After Tesla took over the facility from the former Toyota GM joint venture back in 2010, Fremont has produced more than 2 million vehicles, including the Model S, X, 3, and Y. With a peak annual capacity of about 600,000 vehicles, it's still one of the most productive EV factories in North America. But what makes Fremont so crucial for the Model 2 isn't just output, it's flexibility. Tesla uses Fremont as a real-world test bed for manufacturing breakthroughs. With the Model 2 built on the new Gen 3 platform, which focuses on cutting production costs and simplifying vehicle design, Fremont provides the perfect environment to trial and refine all of these changes. Already, we're seeing advanced systems being tested there, like Giga casting for front and rear underbodies, a more simplified structure with far fewer parts, and a fully automated assembly line built to boost speed and minimize human error. By perfecting these new technologies in Fremont first, Tesla can then roll them out with confidence at its larger factories like Giga Texas and Giga Mexico, knowing they'll hold up under full-scale production. Another major plus for Fremont is its location, just 30 miles from Tesla's engineering HQ in Palo Alto. That close proximity means teams across design, software, and manufacturing can easily collaborate. Quick feedback loops, fast decision-making, and real-time updates to the production line are all possible thanks to this setup. Fremont also makes it easy to host executive walkthroughs, media test drives, and early-stage quality checks. All of which are vital when launching a headline-grabbing car like the Model 2. Then there's the workforce. Fremont employs over 20,000 people, many of whom have years of experience building Teslas using the company's unique systems. That talent pool is a massive advantage, it means Tesla can ramp up production faster and with fewer hiccups. Plus, because Tesla can reuse a lot of its existing supply chains, factory lines, and automation tech at Fremont, the time and cost of getting the Model 2 into production is significantly reduced. Think Tesla made the right call choosing Fremont to launch the Model 2? Drop a, yes, in the comments if you think they couldn't have picked a better place. So once the initial run is up and running in Fremont, how do Giga Texas and Giga Mexico fit into the bigger picture? Well, they're the key to taking this vehicle global. Let's start with Giga Texas. Located right outside of Austin, this massive facility spans more than 10 million square feet and is already producing both the Cybertruck and the Model Y. For the Model 2, Giga Texas will take the production techniques perfected at Fremont and scale them up, fast. We're talking about Tesla's next-gen processes like unboxed vehicle assembly, structural battery packs, and advanced Giga casting. The factory is loaded with custom robotics and in-house automation software, all designed for speed and efficiency. It even includes vertical integration, meaning Tesla can handle everything from battery cell production to final assembly all under one roof. That lowers costs, speeds up delivery, and makes the Model 2 more accessible, especially to price-sensitive regions like the South and Midwest. Head further south, 
and we get to Giga Mexico, Tesla's biggest bet yet on global scale and affordability. This new plant in Santa Catarina, just outside Monterey, will cover about 4,200 acres. It's shaping up to be Tesla's most cost-efficient facility to date. And that's largely due to labor, while the average manufacturing wage in the U.S. is over $27 per hour, in Mexico it's closer to $4.50. Add in cheaper land and lower overhead, and the result is a production model that's perfect for serving international markets at scale. The location is also a huge logistical win. It's close to major rail lines, highways, and shipping routes, which makes it easy to transport vehicles to the U.S. and all across Latin America. Its position between the Gulf of Mexico and the Pacific also sets it up as a major export hub for Europe and Asia. In fact, Tesla has already said Giga Mexico will focus primarily on exports, while Giga Texas remains dedicated to serving the U.S. market. Put it all together, and here's how the roadmap looks, Fremont is where the innovation and R&D happen, Texas is the high-output production hub for North America, and Mexico is Tesla's gateway to global affordability. If you're enjoying this deep dive and want to stay up to speed on everything Tesla's working on, now's a great time to subscribe to Auto Intel and help us hit our goal of 1,000 subscribers. Your support makes a huge difference, and we've got plenty more breakdowns like this on the way. Now let's talk about that prototype everyone's buzzing about. Recently, drone footage captured a heavily camouflaged vehicle doing test runs at the Fremont factory. Tesla's used this black and white wrap before to mask new models, it's the same style they used when testing the Cybertruck and Model Y. But eagle-eyed observers noticed something different about this one, it's significantly smaller than the Model Y. While the Y is around 187 inches long, this mystery vehicle seems to be in the 140 to 150 inch range. That places it firmly in the compact sedan category, similar in size to the Toyota Corolla or Honda Civic. This is a huge move for Tesla. They're clearly targeting the budget EV market with a smaller car that's ideal for city driving. And from what we could see in the footage, the prototype performed smoothly and quietly, another strong hint that it's built on Tesla's brand new Gen 3 platform. That platform is a game changer. It's designed to simplify production, cut down on materials, and improve efficiency across the board. Tesla claims it can cut manufacturing costs by up to 50% compared to older platforms, while delivering better range-to-weight performance. That's crucial when you're aiming for a price around $10,179. And no, this isn't just a modified Model Y, experts analyzing the footage say the proportions are all different from the wheelbase to the door placement to the ride height. It looks about 1.5 to 2 inches lower than the Y, with a new stance and frame that clearly point to an entirely new model. For many EV enthusiasts, this isn't just another prototype, it's the start of a silent revolution. A car like this, priced under $11,000, could completely upend the sub-$20,000 gas-powered segment. We're talking about direct competition with models like the Nissan Versa and Mitsubishi Mirage. So what gets you most hyped about the Model 2 prototype? Drop a comment with 1. If it's the compact size. 2. For the Gen 3 platform. 3. For the $10,179 price tag. Or 4. If it's the chance to finally disrupt gas-powered cars. Now let's dig into what makes the Gen 3 platform so important. One of the biggest innovations is the potential use of aluminum ion battery technology. These batteries offer several advantages over the current lithium ion ones, they're safer, charge faster, and last longer, some reports suggest up to 3000 full charge cycles. They can also charge in under 10 minutes in lab conditions and are easier to source, with fewer environmental impacts during mining and better recyclability. If Tesla can get these into production, it could bring down material costs and long-term maintenance needs in a big way. Another key piece of the Gen 3 puzzle is the unibody giga casting process. Instead of welding together hundreds of small metal parts to build the chassis, Tesla now uses massive 6000 to 9,000-ton gigapress machines to cast entire front and rear sections in just a few pieces. 
that drastically cuts down on complexity, speeds up production, and slashes labor costs by as much as 40%. And it's not just hardware that's changing, Tesla's software-driven, robot-first approach is transforming the factory itself. Elon Musk has said that the highest concentration of robots in any Tesla production line is in the body shop. These lines are designed to be automated from the very start, with humans mainly overseeing quality control and handling exceptions. While the exact features haven't been confirmed yet, the Model 2 is expected to come standard with basic autopilot and potentially a slimmed-down version of full self-driving. With Tesla Vision and Dojo training neural nets in the background, this could be the first EV in its price range to bring semi-autonomous driving to everyday buyers. Inside the cabin, expect Tesla to double down on its minimalist design language. We're talking about a super clean dashboard with just one central screen, likely a 12-inch horizontal display, and no traditional buttons. Fewer components make it easier and cheaper to build, easier to clean, and perfect for robotic assembly, which helps speed up production and reduce defects. But how will U.S. tax laws play into your decision to buy a Model 2? That depends on whether upcoming legislation, nicknamed the Beautiful Bills, passes. These proposals aim to restrict the $7,500 federal EV tax credit to vehicles that are both assembled in the U.S. and built using domestically sourced components. If that becomes law, cars made at Giga Mexico may not qualify for the credit. That means if your Model 2 is built there, you could be paying the full price, anywhere from $10,179 to $17,000 depending on trim, without the federal tax break. Tesla seems to be preparing for that scenario. Sources suggest they'll begin deliveries from Fremont and Giga Texas first, both of which currently meet the Made in America criteria. That means those early vehicles are more likely to qualify for the full $7,500 credit, assuming they also meet the battery sourcing requirements. If pre-orders open in December 2025, getting in early could mean two major things, locking in the launch price and qualifying for the full federal credit. That adds up to potential savings of $7,500, plus a better shot at getting one of the first delivery slots in early 2026. So if you're seriously thinking about getting a Model 2, your best move is to pre-order the moment Tesla opens up reservations. Tesla's system usually works on a first-come, first-served basis, and early buyers are often prioritized. Which would motivate you more to buy a Model 2? Drop price if it's the $7,500 tax credit that seals the deal, or tech if it's Tesla's innovations that win you over. The Tesla Model 2 isn't just another new car. It's a strategic move to completely rethink how electric vehicles are built, priced, and delivered. With a goal of starting at just $10,179 and scaling production across Fremont, Texas, and Mexico, Tesla is aiming to reach millions of drivers who've never even considered going electric. If pre-orders do open this December, would you take the leap? To stay ahead of everything, tax law updates, pricing news, and official reservation info, subscribe to Auto Intel and turn on that bell. We've got a lot more coverage coming and we'd love to have you along for the ride as we push toward 1,000 subscribers.